today we are studying Matthew 20 and uh, 20 and 21, excuse me. We're going to talk about Jesus' parable of the vineyard. We're going to talk about what the kingdom of God is, how Jesus defines it. We're going to talk about Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem right before he went to the cross. Let's pray. Father, thank you, God for the people who are going to join today. Thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for instructing us. Thank you for leaving us a a written copy of all the many of the things you taught and did. Help us to learn from your Word today. Help us apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome, welcome. Let me say say hi to a few people in the comments. Andrea is saying hi. Good good afternoon to you. We're in Matthew 20. Grab your Bibles. uh, Verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like the landowner who went out early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay the normal day wage and sent them out to work. Okay, notice that part. At nine o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around and doing nothing. So he hired them, telling them he would pay them whatever was right at the end of the day. So they went to work in the vineyard. So we got some people at the beginning of the day, probably 6, 7 a.m., 9 a.m. At noon and again at 3 o'clock, he did the same thing. At 5 o'clock that afternoon, he was in town again and some pe- saw some more people standing around. He asked them, why haven't you been working today? They replied, because no one hired us. This is Jesus' story about the parable of the vineyard. We're in Matthew 20. The landowner told them, then go out and join the others in my vineyard. Remember, it's his vineyard, not ours. That evening, he, he told the foreman to call the workers in and pay them, beginning with the last workers first. Those who hired at five o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wage. Then those hired first came to get their pay. They assumed that they would receive more, but they too were paid a day's wage. When they received their pay, They protested to the owner. Those people worked only for one hour, and yet you've paid them just as much as you paid us who worked all day in the scorching heat. Jesus continues. The master answered them, Friend, I haven't been unfair. Didn't I agree to pay, uh, didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? Take your money and go. I wanted to pay this last worker the same as you. Is it against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I'm kind to others? So those who are last now will then be first, and those who are first will be last. We're in Matthew 20, that's verses 1 through 16. A couple things to glean. Jesus said that the labor, the the harvests are plentiful, but the laborers are few. The people who are going to take the kingdom and it doesn't have to be some professional preacher or teacher or you know, uh, someone on YouTube talking, uh, reading the Bible. It, you can be a laborer in your field. There's people in your life, in your workplace, in your family, in your town, your neighborhood, that only you have the ability to reach, right? I don't know them. I don't have a relationship with them. So we're all called to labor, and some people come into that process early in the game, maybe when they're young, and some people later in life, maybe right, before, right at the end of their life, and they can still proclaim the good news of the kingdom, no matter what. As far as wages go, we all get the same wage, eternal life in Christ. That's what we sign up for. Whether you're walking your entire life with Christ or two minutes before you pass away, we get the paid the same wage, eternal life. Now, we read a few weeks ago about there's different rewards in the kingdom. Those who are great in the kingdom, those who are least in the kingdom. That's Matthew 5 through 7. That was that live stream. Go back and watch that if you missed it. But we can't get in a place where we judge others and we see, we we know their hearts. We know what's going on. Let's, Let's allow the Lord to do what he wants with his wages, his vineyard. Amen? Verse 17. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he going up because he's literally traveling uphill. It's a, it's a uh, elevation change. You know, Capernaum is at a certain height. Dead Sea is pretty low. And then J- 
Jerusalem is probably the highest point in Israel. I don't know if there's another mountain higher than that, but it was literally traveling uphill. And that's just an interesting little detail. There's lots of little nuggets in the scriptures that if we never been to Jerusalem, I've never been there, but I've, you know, people have told me stories. My dad's been there. Um, Mark from Little Big Things, he's been there. So I've, I've gleaned information from other people, and it's interesting that that little nugget, that's uh, very interesting. He's actually traveling uphill. He took the 12 disciples aside privately and told them what was going to happen to him. Listen, he said, we're going up to Jerusalem where the Son of Man will be betrayed to the leading priests and teachers of religious law. He'd been priming the pump. He'd been bringing this up. This is um, getting them ready for what they're about to go through. Were they ready for it? No. They uh, Obviously, Peter failed his test, but the Lord redeemed him. Let's read. Leading, uh, the Son of Man will be betrayed to the leading priests and the teachers of the religious law. They will sentence him to die. Then they will hand him over to the Romans to be mocked, flogged with a whip, and crucified. But on the third day, he'll be raised from the dead. That's key, right? So Jesus is telling him step by step exactly what's about to happen here. Then the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, some of the first disciples he called, they're, 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 the two brothers are fishermen along with uh, Simon and uh, or Peter and Andrew. They came to Jesus, she came to Jesus with her sons. She knelt respectfully to ask a favor. What is your request, he asked. She replied, in your kingdom, we we're just talking about the kingdom of God, please let my two sons sit in places of honor next to you, one at your right and the other at your left. In Isaiah, it says um, that the Lord will uphold us by his righteous right hand. So there, there's, a, there's a Jewish context of, of power and authority, right? That's what she's referring to. Again, we, we spoke about it a few live streams ago, how Matthew was written to a Jewish audience. Matthew is a Jew, and it, there, there's little uh, nuances that um, it, it's, it's a little more difficult book, I think, in certain spots to really... Uh, the Sermon on the Mount is very straightforward, Matthew 5 through 7. Very direct. But there's a lot of other nuance throughout the rest of the whole book that... Um, I mean, I've, I've been blessed to learn from a lot of great preacher, preachers and books and, you know, my own studies, but there's a lot of little nuggets in this, in this book. So she's talking about authority and a power in the kingdom, right? But Jesus answered by saying to them, you don't know what you're asking. You think you're asking for something good. You don't understand it. You don't really understand what you don't know. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering I'm about to drink? Oh, yes, they replied. We are able. Jesus told them, you will, you will indeed drink from my bitter cup. But I have no right to say who will sit at my right hand or my left. The Father has prepared those places for the ones he has chosen. So Jesus is again submitting to the will of his Father as we're going to read about in the Garden of Gethsemane, constantly submitted to the Father in humble obedience. I'm sure that there was personality-wise, he connected with different ways with different disciples, because they're all different people, right? Maybe their sense of humor, their personal preferences, just like we all have individual personalities and traits that, that the Lord loves, but he's saying, I, 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 didn't, I don't get to decide that. Let me say hi to some people in the comment section here. London, how you doing? <laughs> I can't see your text, brother. Andrea, can you please pray for me? Having pr um, problems um, with a friend? Ella's saying hi. Hey, thank you for encouraging, Andrea. <laughs> Thanks, Show. I appreciate that. Let's pray for Andrea real quick, and then we're going to go back to the Bible study. So if, you have, if you have a prayer request, we'll take five minutes. We'll take some prayer requests here. Let me know in the comments. I would love to pray for you. So let's pray for our sister Andrea. She's having some challenges with a friend, 
you know, some brokenness in the relationship. Lord, we just pray for Andrea. God, I know that we've prayed before, but we just come to you again. We ask, seek, knock, ASK. We ask that you would bring restoration to this friendship. I pray, God, in faith that you would give Andrea the grace to admit the things that are wrong. I, I pray that you just soften her friend's heart. I pray that they would, even today, be able to have a phone call or a face-to-face conversation and just be humble and forgive each other and talk about the things that are bothering them in Jesus' name. God bless you. Let me know if there's another quick prayer requests. Otherwise, we'll keep studying. We're in Matthew 20. We're going to talk about the kingdom of God. So, G- so again, the disciples, uh, James and John, well, it, it's really their mom. <laughs> Has your mom ever volunteered you for something that you didn't necessarily want to be a part of? So she says, hey, boys, come on up. Let's talk to Jesus. And ask, you know, can they sit at your right hand, the place of authority and power? And she says, you don't know what you're asking for. And he's also predicting, you know, many of these disciples um, suffered tremendously, were martyred for their faith after the resurrection as they were called to lead the church. So verse 24, here's another dynamic. There's, these are real people. When the ten other disciples heard what James and John had asked, they were indignant. Like, who do you think you are to go ask Jesus for that? What is your problem? But Jesus called them together and said, so Jesus is recognizing, you know, things are going sideways really fast. He says, hey, guys, come over, take a knee, listen up. You know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. Do you remember that we read the story about the centurion who came to Jesus and said, My servant is paralyzed. All you have to do is say the word, and he'll be made well. So he recognized that Jesus had ultimate authority, because he is a, a centurion. He's in charge of other soldiers. I think it's a centurion's over 200 soldiers, I believe. Okay, so in the Roman culture, there was a there was a power struggle all the way up to the emperor, that you just do what I say, you do it when I tell you, don't ask questions, submit, right? So Jesus says, don't flaunt your authority over people under you, with your kids, with your spouse, if you're a, a manager, if you're a business owner, pay attention, but among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be become your slave. For even the Son of Man, the one who had all had it all, all the glory, all the power, he left heaven to become a small, frail, killable human baby. So much so that His family had to flee to Egypt so he didn't get killed by Herod. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others. And not just that, not just service, but to give his life as a ransom for many. How do you love others? You lay your life down. You you sacrifice. You, You put your personal preferences on the side, on the back burner, and you serve others. The beautiful thing is if you're in a marriage, like when 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 I submit and I love my spouse and she submits and loves me back, we both get our needs taken care of, right? Hey, thank God bless you, show. Welcome in, Deslin. If you hear me, if you're watching this after the fact, I'm talking to some people in the comments of the live stream, so... All right, where are we at? Uh, Matthew 20, verse 29. As Jesus and the disciples left the town of Jericho, this is more on the eastern side, over by the Jordan River, eastern um, Israel, a large crowd followed followed behind. Two blind men were sitting beside the road. When they heard that Jesus was coming that way, they began shouting, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. So again, there's, there's, there's the authority of Jesus. There's his mercy, his compassion, his ability to heal. Be quiet, the crowd yelled at them. 
They're upset. We, they don't want to miss what Jesus was going to say to them. But they only shouted louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. <laughs> I could just see this playing out. Can't you? These, these blind men, they're just desperate, so desperate. God, make us desperate. Make us hungry for you. Make us hungry for your word. Lord, let us not grow tired and dull and boring in our hearts. Let us become alive to your word in Jesus' name. Verse 32, when Jesus heard them, he stopped and called. There's probably a, you know, there's a big crowd surrounding him. There's probably a dull roar from all the people talking and, you know, arguing with the, so it's, it's probably a distant ways off, but Jesus gets word. He stopped and called, what do you want for me? Or, excuse me, I can't read all of a sudden. What do you want me to do for you? Lord, they said, we want to see. God, give us spiritual eyes. Open our eyes to see the kingdom of God. Help us to see the people around us. Help us not to miss it. Help us not to be like the Pharisees who are so stuck in their religious ways, they miss the Son of God. Help us not to miss what you're doing on the earth here and now, what you're trying to do in us in Jesus' name, amen? Jesus felt sorry for them and touched their eyes. He touched the lepers. He touched the dead people. They <laughs> came to life. He touched the blind people. He touched the demon-possessed people, and they were made well. What did the disciples of John say? Like, are you the one? Are you the Christ? John's in prison. He wants to know. What do you see? The blind see, the deaf hear, the sick are healed, and the poor have the good news of the kingdom preached to them. That's the fruit of Jesus' life. Jesus felt sorry for them and touched their eyes. Instantly, they could see. Then they fouled him. Did you see that? Instantly. Out of worship, they said, man, I'm giving it all to you, Jesus. I sense your, your touch, your power. I want to follow you. Help us, Lord, to follow Christ today. Let me catch up with some people on the comments. Yay, no longer afraid. Shout out to Jesus. Amen. Yep, we're talking about Jesus. Studying the Bible here. Was Jesus a Christian? <laughs> uh, he is the author and finisher of our faith. Hey, Crispy. Who crucified Jesus? The Romans, my friend. Romans. All right, we're in Matthew 21 now. We're reading verse 21, uh, verse 1. I was hoping to get to this last week. We had some, a bunch of stuff going on. We recorded some great podcast episodes. I'm excited for to get that edited and get, let, let you guys see that. So I'm hoping you're, hoping you're enjoying all the content we've been posting. And we just want to be faithful and uh, with what the message and the... Um, just whatever understanding that we that God I feel has blessed us with, just want to share it. We want to help people grow in their faith and uh, come alive. All right, we're in uh, verse twenty-one. So we, this is leading up to um, the, res, uh, the the de his death and resurrection. So here's here's the the final days of Jesus. Starts in Matthew twenty-one. As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem. They came to the, the town of Bethpage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Go into the valley over there, or the village over there, and as soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with its colt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say the Lord needs them, and he will immediately let you take them. Here's a quick side note. Is there something in your life that the Lord says, I need that? Something that you need to untie. Think about that. Is it a, a part of your time, your finances, your attention, that career choice, that school choice, that marriage choice? Is there something you need to untie? Think about it. Verse 4, this this. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, Tell the people of Jerusalem, Look, your king is coming to you, your Messiah. He is humble 
riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. That is from Isaiah 62. So again, another prophecy being fulfilled just by uh, Jesus living his life, written hundreds of years before Jesus was even born. Notice how in his first coming, as the suffering servant, he's riding humbly on a donkey's colt. But what does the book of Revelation say when he returns to the earth? He will be riding on a war horse as the conquering king, the savior of the world, all of his glory. Amen. Hey, Crispy, how's it going? Shout out from New York. God bless you. I'm in Minnesota. Hopefully the, you don't get pounded with the snow we just got. It was kind of yucky yesterday. God bless you. Glad to have you, man. Um, Sun Man saying, I thought the foundation of Christianity began in Rome. Nope. Began in Jerusalem. That's where Jesus was crucified. That's where the original um, disciples, original Christians were starting to spread the word on uh, Pentecost, they call it. It was a um, Jewish celebration. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit came and spread from there, spread from Jerusalem. Jesus, yeah, he was born uh, Jewish. King Herod was also Jewish. Um, so in that time, the Romans had already conquered uh, Israel. Herod was the, I believe they call him the Tetrarch, kind of like a, a governor, if you will. So he had ruling authority, but only so much. Um, he was still underneath the rule and authority of Pontius Pilate. Pontius was the representative of, I, I believe they call him the proconsul or consul. He was a direct representative of Rome who was in leadership of the that area. Yep. Katie, love it. God bless you. Uh, Janet, uh, Jew, not Jewish. Sorry, we're going off on tangents here, guys. How about this? We'll finish our Bible study. If you want to stick around and ask all these, these questions, I'll, I'll stick around. We'll talk about it, but I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep studying the, we're going to keep studying Matthew 21 and then we'll, I'll get to all your questions. Okay. So you just hold on to them. Otherwise we're going to, we can go on a tangent for 20 minutes on that. All right, we are in Matthew 21, verse 6. The two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him, and they threw their garments on the colt, and he sat on it. I bet part of them was thinking, man, this is it. This is it. We're, let's go. We're going to go take over the Romans. We're going to have this, this great victory party. <laughs> I bet part of it was an excitement in them. Like they, this is what they've been waiting for and hoping for. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. This is a sign of honor, a sign of, of worship. They're recognizing Jesus as their, uh, their king. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this, they asked. It's a small city. You know, it's not a very big area, a couple square miles maybe. At this time, it's Passover time. So the city of Jerusalem is normally 30,000 people. And this is a special uh uh, Passover in that it's the year of Jubilee, every 50 years, okay? So scholars estimate there's probably about two and a half million people crammed into this tiny city, you know, camping around it. It's, it's crazy. It's a wild party. And there's this uproar, and Jesus is entering, and they hear the shouts. They hear the singing. There's probably, you know, people playing music and dancing. It's, this, this is a big, big ordeal, and the crowds replied, It's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Verse 12, we're in Matthew 21, if you're just tuning in. Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out all the people buying and selling animals for sacrifice. He knocked over the tables of money changers and the chairs of those 
uh, chairs of those selling doves. He said to them, the scriptures declare, my temple will be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. So initially, th- this temple was set up by, by David. He took, the, they had the tabernacle, they had the, the tent uh, in the wilderness. And David said, I want to build you a permanent house. I want to give you a, a beautiful place where we can worship you, where we can pray. David even spent, uh, in today's terms, hundreds of millions of dollars setting up worshipers and singers and musicians to day and night worship the Lord. That was David's heart. He was a man after his, God's heart. Verse 14, the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them over and over and over. He didn't turn people away. He always made time. Just like he makes for us, guys. Amen? The leading priests and the teachers of the religious law saw these wonderful miracles and heard even the children in the temple shouting, Praise God for the son of David. Again, son of David, it's, it's, it's a kingly term. But the leaders were indignant <laughs> over and over and over. They, they're just ticked off. They missed it, didn't they? They asked Jesus, do you hear what these children are saying? Yes, he replied. Maybe with a smirk, I wonder. Haven't you ever read the scriptures? For they say, you have taught children and infants to give you praise. That is, sorry, I'm looking up the reference here. Uh, Psalm 8, verse 2. Then he, he returned to Bethany where he stayed overnight. So Bethany is really close to Jerusalem. Again, there's millions of people in Jerusalem. It's, it's a packed house. Let me know where you're, you guys are watching from. Hit thumbs up on the stream if you're enjoying it. Share it with somebody. Text them. Verse 18. In the morning, as Jesus was returning to Jerusalem, he was hungry. He's still a man, right? He still has normal desires. And he noticed a fig tree beside the road. He went over to see if, it had, or had, if there were any figs, but there were only leaves. Then he said to it, May you never bear fruit again. And immediately the fig tree withered up. The disciples were amazed when they saw this and asked, why did the fig tree wither so quickly? Then Jesus told them, I tell you the truth. If you have faith and don't doubt, you can do the things like this and much more. You can even say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. You can pray for anything. And if you have faith, you'll receive it. We talked about on the last live stream about that mustard seed of faith. Pure faith. Just a tiny bit. It's so powerful. A couple thoughts. Jesus said, good trees bear good fruit. Bad trees bear bad fruit. Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. He's always talking about fruit. Why? Because fruit grows. Why is it the fruit of the Spirit and not the... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to think of an analogy. Why is it a fruit? Because it grows. Okay? That's this whole Christian life. It's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. It's a walking it out day by day, taking up our cross, following our Savior, denying ourselves, being the servant of all. That's what the kingdom requires of us. So he's always talking about fruit. He's always talking about that. He says, even, er, you can even say this mountain may be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. God can move mountains. He can bend the laws of physics. He can do insane miracles. I've seen them faced, uh, up close and personal. And he can also move that mountain by handing you a shovel and giving you the grace to walk it out. He gets to determine what, how he answers our prayers. Don't stop asking for the miraculous. Don't stop in asking for the impossible. Because if you don't ask, you won't receive. That's what Jesus told us. You have to ask. Ask in faith. 
pure faith. Not selfish faith. That's what James talks about. You don't, you, you don't receive what you ask for because you ask for selfish reasons. That's what James says. Verse 23. When Jesus returned to the temple and began teaching, the leading priests and elders came up to him. They demanded, by what authority are you doing all these things? Who gave you the right? <laughs> Man, I'll tell you by what authority I do these things. If you answer one question, Jesus replied, did John's authority to, be, to baptize come from heaven or was it merely human? Boom, mic drop. They talked over among themselves. If we say it was from heaven, he will ask us why we didn't believe John. But if we say it was merely human, we'll be mobbed because the people believed John was a prophet. And John was the cousin of Jesus. He was also martyred for calling out Herod's uh, immorality. So they finally replied, we don't know. They lied. And Jesus responded, then I won't tell you by what authority I do these things. If you're ever in a situation where you're being challenged and attacked for your faith, God will give you wisdom in that moment. He did it for the, for the apostles. He did it for Jesus. He'll do it for you and he'll do it for me. Amen. Let me say hi to some people in the comment section here. Um, well, uh, I don't know if I'm going to reply to that, Sophia. Hey, Katie's checking in from the UK Channel Islands. Glad to have you. Hey, Robert. Glad to have you back, man. All right, let's keep, again, we'll, we'll get into theological questions and all that towards the end, and also prayer requests if you have them. Uh, we are in Matthew 21, and we're in verse 28. So Jesus just it just kind of put in the, the Pharisees in their place. And then he turns and says, But what do you think about this? A man with two sons told the older boy, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, No, I won't go. But later he changed his mind and went anyway. Then the father told the other son, You go. And he said, Yes, sir, I will. But he didn't. Which of the two obeyed his father? They replied, The first. Then Jesus explained his meaning. I tell you the truth. Corrupt tax collectors and prostitutes will get into the kingdom of God before you do. For John the Baptist came and showed you the right way to live, but you didn't believe him. While tax collectors and prostitutes did. One of his own disciples was a tax collector, Matthew. And even when you saw this happening, you refused to believe him and repent of your sins. Now listen to another story. A certain landowner planted a vineyard, built a wall around it, dug a pit for pressing out the grape juice, and built a lookout tower. He built a beautiful wine uh, a vineyard. Then he leased the vineyard to tenant farmers and, remo and moved to another country. At the time of the grape harvest, he sent his servants to collect his share of the crop. But the farmers grabbed his servants, beat one, killed one and stoned another. Jesus continues. So the landowner sent a larger group of his servants to collect for him, but the results were the same. Finally, the owner sent his son, thinking surely they will respect my son. But when the tenant farmers saw his coming, they said to one another, here comes the heir to his estate. Come on, let's kill him and get the estate for ourselves. So they grabbed him, dragged him out of the vineyard, and murdered him. When the owner of the vineyard returns, Jesus asked, What do you think he will do to those farmers? The religious leaders replied, He will put the wicked men to a horrible death and lease the vineyard to others who will give him his share of the crop after each harvest. Then Jesus asked, Didn't you ever read this in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation that will produce the proper fruit. 
Anyone who stumbles over that stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone who falls on it. When the leading priests and Pharisees heard this parable, they realized who's telling the story against them. They were the wicked farmers. They wanted to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowds who considered Jesus to be a prophet. The stone that rejected the builders, that is from Psalm 118. So what's Jesus talking about? So the beautiful vineyard, that's God creating the world. He put, he put his, his, his promise on Jacob, Isaac, or Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He sent his prophets. He sent, he gave them Moses to lead them. He gave them Joshua. He gave them the judges. He sent his prophets. He sent more prophets. And over and over and over, the people rebelled. Maybe for a while they would turn, they would follow God, and then they would go the other way. They would turn reverse course. So just like the tenant farmers saw the sun coming, they've seen Jesus for years at this point. They've seen the miracles. They've, seen the, they've heard the teaching. They've seen what's happening. And they're saying this, and they've even blasphemed against the Holy Spirit and said, this move of God, this is of Satan. This is demonic. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the chief cornerstone. Anyone who stumbles over that stone, Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Anyone who stumbles over that stone will be broken into pieces. Anyone who humbles himself and realizes that he is the Savior, we need him. When we are broken, when we're humble, when we're contrite, when we stumble over that, he'll heal us. But the people who don't repent, it's like a rock that just falls on them and crushes them. We live in that age of grace. So I would plead with you, if you're not sure, if you somehow found this live stream and you're not even walking with God, I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to see God save you and set you free and set you on a path that you could never, ever imagine. He interrupted my life when I was 13, when I was drifting towards atheism. I was, I was depressed. I was hopeless. And he set me apart. He pulled me out of the pit. So I hope if that's you, if you're listening right now and you need that, let me know. Let's pray. All right, guys, we're going to, we'll do, I'll take prayer requests now. We can talk about um, any theology questions you guys have. You guys have been leaving a bunch of, a bunch of comments, so I'm trying to catch up here and see what you guys are talking about. Uh, Sophia's talking about church is the body of Christ. Um, so I'm just trying to read through all these comments and see if you guys have questions or what we're talking about here. James, I would say from uh, my own personal beliefs, like there's some pretty crazy stuff going on in politics right now on both sides of the aisle. I would say definitely more on the uh, the Democratic side. Per that's my own personal beliefs. It's not like little big things endorsing Republicans or something. But man, we just need a third party. We need a Jesus party, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> man, we need we need God so much. Our world is it's broken, it's messed up. I don't like it when people lie and cheat and do whatever they have to to get power and control people and promise things that just, they're just they're never ever going to deliver on. I love it that Jesus promises everything and he gives us everything. He doesn't uh he doesn't just lead us on. I love that. Hey Romani God bless you. I, I I know we've talked a few times in the comments. You're you're so sweet. 
Uh, Adair is saying, Anjos existem? Is that Latin? Is that uh, Spanish? I don't, I don't know. What does that mean? Let me know. If you, have, if you guys have prayer requests or just want to talk, hang out, I'll stay around for a little bit and we'll, we'll chat. And as far as what Sophia is talking about with uh, um, Peter being the Pope and all that kind of stuff, the Catholic Church, I mean, I, I'm not Catholic personally, so I, 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 don't, uh, I don't know. I don't have a ton of opinions on it other than I know what I believe. I know, I know that Jesus is my Savior. I put my faith wholeheartedly in him, save me in my sins. That's where I'm at. If you see me looking off the side here, I'm trying to catch up on, on comments. I, I'm curious what uh, what you guys did this past weekend. If you, I know I put up a <laughs> a poll question about Easter, and a bunch of people are like, "Easter is demonic!" <laughs> Everybody's all fired up. I'm like, "Whoa!" I'm just trying to start a conversation, and a lot of people got all fired up and. I get it. The whole Esther, the Easter, the bunny thing is like old pagan religion and blah, blah, blah. I just take it as a time every year where I personally just pause and reflect and, and remember what Christ has done on the cross, his, his, how he set us free, how he broke the chains over sin and death. That's, that's what I personally do. As far as the, the specific date that it happened on, like I'm not I'm not some Jewish scholar that can tell you precisely. This is the day he was crucified, or stuff like that. Uh, Katie's asking for prayer for her beautiful children and herself. Uh, going through a lot right now. I need healing and happiness. If you can pray, I'd be so grateful. I'd love to pray, Katie. So this is partic- participa- participation prayer time. So put the prayer emoji in the chat. Leave her a quick message. Let her know that you're listening, you're praying for. Father God, we just thank you for Katie. We thank you for her children. Thank you that she's taking time on a a Wednesday to seek your face. God, I thank you that you are the answer to all of her questions. I thank you that you have all the peace, all the provision, all the protection that she needs. God, I don't know her whole situation, but you do. You know about it and you care about it. And Father, I just pray that you'd move in their their home. I don't know the story with the, our husband slash the kid's father, but I pray that you'd bring peace and restoration and healing in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, sister. Glad you joined. A7, thank you for praying, brother. Or sister. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> which is which. Hey, Sophia, I just, I'll just let you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna, uh, do some long discourse on specific doctrines like that. Like, the point is, I mean, we this organization, we're not affiliated with some particular denomination or, you know, whether it's Catholic or Protestant or evangelical, whatever. I can tell you what, what kind of church I grew up in and what I believe. I just, <laughs> I just believe what the Bible says. Jesus is my Savior. I, I am uh, all have fallen short of the glory of God and need a Savior. That's where I stand. Hey, you're so welcome, Katie. Amen. So let me know. I'm kind of curious. What did what did you guys do over the weekend? Did you go to church? Did you spend time with your family? Um, stay at home. How how did you how did you celebrate the weekend? I while you guys put your comments in the chat, I'll just uh, give you a rundown. So my family and I we we so I have two boys from a previous marriage, remarried to a lovely godly woman. And uh, so my boy, we take turns. So this year the boys are with us and had a nice uh, um, time together Saturday night. Had some had some fun 
finding the Easter eggs <laughs> with some little candies and whatever. You can think what you want of that. If you don't agree, then that's fine. Um, just trying to have fun, make it a, a, an event. And then we went to church and had a nice time, nice dinner, a nice lunch. And that was kind of our, uh, just our immediate family called family members and friends. It's a nice time just to, just to be together, I think, for us. That's how we, we celebrate. Amen, Deslin. Thank you for praying. Hey, thank you, Katie. I hope you got to spend uh, spend the weekend with your, your kiddos and did something fun with them. I think one thing I learned from Mark, he, so he's the founder of our organization, and he said that I think it's really important, especially with younger kids, to make church an event where, you know, it's fun. Try to do something fun afterwards, whether it's go to the park, that's free. Or, you know, if you can afford it, go out to eat as, as a family. Make it a an event where they look forward to it, they have a nice time. And I think the more that we can surround our kids, especially, and ourselves, really, with other godly Christian friends... That's such a huge thing. Like, it's so hard to be a teenager in today's age that if your children have godly friends, that statistically and spiritually and so many other factors just raises their chances of having lasting long-term faith. Let me read some comments here. So, Sophia, I'm, I'm reading all your comments. I'm not trying to ignore you. I'm just, uh, I don't know if you just wanted to share what's on your heart or you had a question or let me know. I'm not sure if you just want to talk about it or let me know if you have a question or something you want to discuss. Hey, that's awesome, Deslin. I'm glad you and Hiwat got to go to church. Interesting. Mommy, a traditional sweet food. I'm curious now. Is that is that a Finnish dish or what what is that? Oh, Eritrean Ethiopian Easter is only in, in May. Interesting, May fifth. So then, I know Hispanic people celebrate Cinco de Mayo. It's like a I think it's a Mexican Independence Day. So some people kinda like, you know, get you know, some some Americans get into that. Very interesting. I wonder how I, where the, all the calendar differences come from and um, what happens with that. Okay, Lent's the 55 days. Well, again, uh, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the year of Jubilee, again, that was the, the year that, 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 that Jesus was crucified was a year of Jubilee. So that's an every 50-year celebration in the Jewish calendar of uh, debts being set free. You know, when when Isaiah talks about he, uh, he led the, the host of captives free, that's what, you know, kind of he's alluding to. And I think there's a, a celebration ramp up. I think it is 50 or 55 days. I might be off on that, but I don't know. Stuff I studied years ago in Bible school, I forgot a bunch of it. <laughs> Shout out to my uh, Old Testament professor, Tom. He's a a great guy. Yeah. Katie's saying she went to the beach, took the babies and a dog along. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm feeling grateful too. I think it's just a great, I mean, ideally every week or every day we're examining our hearts and just kind of like what Paul wrote in Corinthians to examine ourselves, especially before we take communion. I don't know how often your church does that. Maybe it's every week. Maybe it's every month. Um, you can let me know in the comments. But I think it's 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 powerful to just pause and reflect and let that turn into praise, really, for our Savior and what he's done, um, everything he's brought us out of. And I'm sure many of you have a testimony. My pastor likes to say, you have to go through a test before you get a testimony, Right? but uh, he's always faithful to us. Romani's saying, I went to the church after a long time. Um, 
Arabic Holy Mass. Interesting. I didn't understand a word, but the hymns were amazing. Church was filled with good vibes. It was such a blessing. That's that's very unique. An Arabic Holy Mass. Romani, I'm, I'm curious, where, where are you from? Oh, thank you, Sophia. Thank you for caring about <laughs> care about our eternal lives. That's that's the best thing. Um, some sort of table and altar for the sacrificial lamb of God who has shed his blood. Um, I don't know if I follow. I don't know what you mean. Deslin's asking for prayers for final two weeks of dissertation editing. I'm in the final last stage. Wow. Multi-year process. I know you've been working on your doctor, brother. Let's pray. Put the prayer emoji in the chat. Let, let Deslin know that you care and you're praying for him too. Father, we just thank you that you brought Deslin through this process. Thank you that you reunited him with his wife. And I just pray that you would just give him the final energy, the, the push to, to finish well, after all these years of study and uh, uh, growth and applying himself, God, I just pray that you just give him your peace, give him supernatural wisdom, give him favor, God. I pray that this dissertation would come out way better than he naturally could ever achieve. And I just pray you just bless his socks off and uh, <laughs> give him the energy, Lord, to all the long hours of study and writing and all of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Interesting. So Romani is um, in Dubai, but Sri Lankan. Very cool. I think that's one place I'd, I'd like to visit, at least. I, I've heard cool things about it. Oh, okay. Sophia, so the table you're talking about for the Eucharist, like uh, Catholic Mass type of thing. Okay. I didn't. I, now, now I understand what you're talking about. Hey, thank you for praying, guys. You're awesome. Um, if you're just tuning in, you missed the live stream, zoop, rewind it. We're just kind of chatting, hanging out, taking prayer requests. So, And if uh, if you ever miss a live stream, they're always on our channel as a regular video. If you just hit the live tab, you can go uh, watch them whenever you want. And I just want to do a quick plug for some free stuff we have on our website um, littlebigthings.org. I'll put the link in the chat. So if you haven't already, go to our website, go sign up. You can get a, all we ask for is your email. So you can just, you know, keep in touch. And uh, we have some amazing books on there about forgiveness, about how to um, defeat this, the lies that Satan throws at us with God's power, right from God's word. Um, there's kids books on there. There's kids music. There's adult music on there. Um, you can sign up if you, if you like, I'm going to give you a different link in a second here. If you want to get daily devotional videos. So we, we publish probably two, maybe three brand new, excuse me, long videos on our channel every week. And if, uh, Hey wealthy. And, um, if you want to get a daily devotional, like it's usually three, four, maybe five minute video emailed to you every single day, that second link will take you right there. You can put in your email. We'll send them to you for free. Um, I think we have over, we have over 300, probably closer to 400 videos by now that um, um, it'll take you a while to go through all of them. So uh, yeah, brother uh, or sister, wealthy, uh, go ahead and ask, ask away. I'd love to, love to chat. Yeah, amen. Amen to that, Sophia. Abide in me, and I in you. This is John fifteen four. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I love that. That's one of my favorite verses. That whole discourse. That's just powerful stuff. There. I like how you you have Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the subnot synoptic gospels gospels there are a lot of similarity a lot of overlap um you know there's three different writers so there's a little bit different you know angles on different um events that happen in the life of jesus but 
John, he just takes a very different approach. I always recommend brand new people are kind of um, young believers. Read Luke, not just because it's my name. Luke just does a, he lays it out really easy. It's a really easy read. Matthew, again, it, it's, he cr- in, includes some incredible details, but unless you have the kind of background of what he's even talking about, some of the things just, you know, go, they'll go right over your head. It's just a little confusing. So Wealthy's asking about, do you think it's fair for an 18-year-old girl to have a relationship with 30 or 38-year-old guy? Age of difference is 20 years. Um, well, I, that, that leads me to ask more questions. I guess, uh, uh, who is this girl? Uh, how mature is she? Is she just doing this for... Is she doing it for the right reasons? Is the guy doing it for the right reasons? That, I guess I'd have a lot more questions. I'm not saying it's 100% wrong, but oftentimes people do that kind of stuff for the wrong reasons. And they get into um, a, an unhealthy relationship where, you know, if people have good boundaries at first, they quickly dissolve. It's just turns into a weird power struggle. I've, you know, n- I've never personally been in that situation, but I've known people who have, and it, it, it often goes sideways, very, very sideways. Not so mature, normal girl. Um, I, again, I guess that doesn't tell me much. Um, I guess... It, it, my main question is why? What, why? Why does the 18 year old think that she should be with the 38 year old? Why does the 38 year old think he wants to be with the 18 year old? Why? <laughs> so I'm just waiting on your response because there's a little oops, there's a little bit of a delay when. I say something and you guys hear it and then, you know, it takes time for you to comment and all that kind of stuff. So just want my answer, whether it's morally right or wrong. I would say without knowing any more details, most of the time wrong. Let me guess. You're going to bring up a Bible story. Huh? Huh? That's okay. I don't mind a good debate. I'll probably pre-answer your your next question. There's a lot of weird stories in the Bible of, I mean, like Jacob, he had, he married Leah, he married Rachel, he had children with their maids. So he had children with like, what, three or four different women? Is that healthy and normal? Uh, No. And there was an insane amount of dysfunction that followed. All right. Well, I assume too much. I thought you're. I thought that's why you were going with it, buddy. Yeah. As far as morally right or wrong, uh, I don't know, man. It depends on a lot, a lot more factors. But what I was trying to say is there, there's a lot of instances where stuff like that it just it didn't it didn't go well. Again, I think more of that kind of stuff was common many years ago, just because, um, I mean, most women were married off, maybe either arranged marriage or courted and, and married typically an older man, uh, by the time they were 20 and many times they already had a kid or two by that point. I think nowadays there's, we have a problem with delayed adolescence, both for men and women. So, um, I think it goes back to how they're raised. A lot of a lot of kids are not given enough responsibility and are just kind of uh, extended adolescence is what I would call it. Yeah. Yeah, there's got to be wisdom. And wealthy, I don't know if this is your personal story or for a friend or what however you're asking, but I would I would get with someone who's wise and loves God 
and know and you can open up and say all the details, right? Because unless someone has all the information, they can't really um, give you a good answer, right? And so if you just ask or give them all the details, let them ask whatever question they want, I think that's when you can get real wisdom. The Bible says um, there's wisdom, there's victory when you have many counselors. So don't just get the opinion of one person. Don't get the person of one person on YouTube. Um, ask many counselors, but you got to explain all the goods and the bad and uh, trust that. And hopefully it's someone who knows you, has good intentions for you, and will give you an honest answer. That's what I've always tried to do. Um, I've, I've done learned that the easy way and the hard way in life. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I think I'm going to call it for today. Um, tomorrow we might be recording another podcast. I'm not sure if we'll be on the live tomorrow, but I'm going to try to. So um, let me pray for you. Let me pray for your day. Father, I just thank you for my friends. I thank you for the time just to chat, hang out. Thank you for the Word of God, how it changes and molds and shapes our lives, how it transforms our mind to think like you, to live like you. Help us, God, to take these scriptures, apply it to our lives. Help us to, our hearts to come alive to these stories that reveal your heart. We thank you, King Jesus, for humbly riding on that donkey and still enduring to the cross, even though you knew all the stuff that was going to come up and you were faithful to the end. You rose from the grave. Thank you for resurrection power. Thank you, God, that when we lay our lives and we die to ourselves, resurrection power can lead us closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And uh, thank you for tuning in. See ya.